Why is the tax plan that Hillary Clinton offering better for America? Because it doesn't add nearly as much to the national debt. She's got plans to invest $300 billion approximately in infrastructure, and she finds for a way to pay for it. Trump's tax plan, which is classic, you know, I'm going to cut your taxes, but I'm going to spend more money, independent group has said would add about $11 trillion to the national debt. We got a country that's already got $19 trillion in debt, adding $11 trillion more. Boy, oh boy, we're talking about our kids and our grandkids. You would give them an America that would not be able to compete. Of course, his particulars on his plan would also be enormously beneficial to himself. Of course, we don't know how much money Donald Trump has because he won't release his tax reform returns unlike the previous 40 presidential candidates, uh, Democrat and Republican alike. The fact that he's part of an audit, does that make a difference? Absolutely not. He says he'll release it once. Absolutely audit, not. Listen, you don't I've been it. a business guy longer than I've been in politics. <laughs> you know, in business, you kind of know. You can kind of hear somebody who's a lot of talk, a lot of blather. You know, we do know Donald Trump has bankrupted a number of companies. We do know Donald Trump doesn't oftentimes pay his subcontractors, small businesses. But we do know this. If we, but if we accept for a moment Donald Trump's own estimates of his net worth, we know from his plan that it would give his family a $4 billion tax cut. Now, what's fair about giving Donald Trump a $4 billion tax cut? Because his tax plan cuts money at the top end, cuts money for pass-through companies, and candidly will add, Andy, at least $11 trillion to the national debt. As a business guy, not as a politician. As a business guy, that's a bad plan. Yeah. He would take it from uh, the top, uh, the income tax bracket, to 33 from 39.6%. Uh, that is a uh, decrease of 66 .6. What does that mean? What, what's well, what, a hard listen, number? There is, there is a need to take American corporate tax rates and find a way to get them lower to compete with the rest of the world. Hey, he wants to reduce it from 35 to 15 percent. Isn't but he, that good? But he, what he's not shown is how to pay for it. Virtually everybody else who talks about doing tax reform has said they will pay for it by trying to close down some of the tax loopholes that businesses get. This is Democrat and Republican alike. Here's the only guy around who says, I'm just going to cut. And by the way, he's also going to cut what's called pass-through companies, which are directly beneficial to folks like his own family. Partnerships such as law firms to 15 percent. But Isn't that good? He doesn't tell you how to play, pay for it. Again, we have had... If I'm a lawyer, don't I want Trump with that? If, if you're a lawyer and you're saying, I just want to see taxes cut, but I don't give a hoot about whether the government can pay for any investments in education or roads or research, because, you know... Then what? You didn't finish that. Then what you've got is you've got an opportunity to say, should America completely disinvest, or should we simply rack up more and more bills that we're going to have to pass on to our kids? There is not a single responsible Republican or Democrat who've introduced anything close to what Donald Trump is proposing. Now, on middle income, okay, and let's just talk about the middle income folks, except these numbers uh, are, are that he would reduce the seven tax brackets to three, okay? But my question for you is, Clinton will not raise taxes on middle class, but she really doesn't lower them. Why doesn't she lower it for middle income? Middle income's struggling out there. Yeah, she's keeping it just the way it is, but why doesn't she lower it? And you know, at is some that, point- Because you don't at, know how to pay for it? At some point, facts matter. At some point, you gotta realize, you know, America is 31st out of 34 in terms of industrial nations, in terms of total tax revenues as a percent of our economy. You know, I would love to see some additional tax relief through tax reform, but if you're going to cut for somebody else, you've got to find a way to pay for it. Trump is basically, just like all his other policies, a lot of bluster, no substance, is saying he's going to cut, and again, we don't know how much he's going to personally benefit, but it, let's just take Trump at his own words. If he's nearly as rich as he says he is, his tax plan would cut his family's taxes by $4 billion. Is that the right thing to do when we're not investing in education, in roads, in research and development? But what is it? 
Hillary Clinton come out and say, I'm going to reduce taxes for middle income America by 5%. Because if I think what she's been trying to do is be responsible enough to say, before you start talking about where are you going to get additional reductions, how are you going to pay for everything? You know, we've had 50 or 60 years now where we've had politicians candidly in both parties who promise I'm going to cut your taxes but increase spending, and now we got $19 trillion in debt on our national balance sheet. And what we end up with, and think about this here in, in Hampton Roads, when your viewers say, my gosh, where's this stupidity called sequestration coming from? Sequestration comes around because we don't generate enough revenues and we've never done entitlement reform. So if you want to end up having sequestration come back in on steroids, you know, go forward with somebody like a Donald Trump plan who doesn't worry about how you make ends meet. Because you know Donald Trump's approach is spend money, frankly oftentimes stiff his subcontractors, and when people say, hey, you didn't pay, he says, sue me. I don't know as President of the United States where, you, where the most important thing that we have is the full faith and credit that America pays its bills that anybody rationally would say, I'm going to hire somebody that's basically going to say, I'm going to cut your taxes, spend like mad, and then basically say to folks, sue me? How about estate taxes? He wants to eliminate the so-called death tax that is levied on estates of more than 5.45 million, I believe. 10.9 for Mary. Yeah. She wants to increase the estate tax to 45 from four, and apply more. Uh, she wants to put taxes on estates that aren't as big as others. Yeah, what, what do you, That's a little no, awkward. No, 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 I, I, I understand. I, wanna, he, I understand. He, okay. Let me just do this. You know how many folks get hit up with the estate tax under the current exemptions? Less than 1%. You know, listen, I believe if you've got, you got a family farm, you've got a family business, you want to pass it on to your kids, you ought to be able to do that in a way that the estate taxes don't hit you so much that you can't pass that, that asset on. And so you're basically saying we've that's got, not an issue. We've got that, no, we've got that system in place. But when you're saying you want to get rid of the estate taxes for a Donald Trump or a Warren Buffett or a Bill Gates, no, I don't think that's good policy. Warren Buffett doesn't think that's good policy. This is the area that would actually, if he's as rich as he says he is, would help Donald Trump's family with a $4 billion tax cut. When the, all the challenges we got in this country, you know, is that the kind of president you want? Again, we don't know what his real numbers are because he won't release his taxes. But Let's talk about child care. Okay, mm -hmm. he wants to make all child care costs tax deductible. Isn't that good? It's, it's a kid. Here's what he did. He went out and Up said... Up to $6,000. Yeah, here, with Andy, child. Andy, here's what he did. He, he started talking about a high-end babysitting service that's at some of his hotel properties. You know, that's not a child care program. Again, he's not talked about how he's going to pay for it. He's not talked about a child tax care credit that would actually be tailored towards low and moderate income folks. You know, the truth is, the truth is, Andy, somebody like me who's done pretty well, I don't think I should be getting a child tax care credit. But a lot of people should be getting it, and the fact the is that Hillary Clinton has not proposed any changes in the tax code dealing with child care. Not true. Hillary Clinton has talked about increasing support for early childhood education. She's talked about increasing support. But she hasn't proposed making, any changes to do it. She's talked no, about she's it. Taught what she's, no, she, what, she, what she has proposed are actually programmatic changes that are tailored to the folks who need the assistance the most, middle class and lower in moderate income Americans. Now, Social Security. Allow taxpayers to deduct child care costs from Social Security and Medicare taxes. That's what Trump wants to do. Isn't that good? What Trump doesn't talk about is how he's going to pay for any of this stuff. We'll ask the wealthiest Clinton to contribute more to Social Security by raising the cap on income currently subject to Social Security taxes, but has not released any details. Well, listen, Andy, here's, here's Why? the thing. Why? Because that might not be No, no, politically Andy, popular. Andy, here's the thing. Social Security and Medicare two greatest programs the federal government's ever created. And a whole lot of Americans, a whole lot of Virginians rely on Social Security and Medicare. Here's the point, though. When you and I were kids, there were 16 people working for every one person on retirement. Today, there are three people working for every one person on retirement. That means it's just math. 
There aren't enough people paying in for those taking out. So if we don't do something, and this can be phased in through over a period of time, and part of it is saying, well, maybe if you've done well, you shouldn't just pay Social Security taxes on your first $120,000 of income. Maybe you should pay it on your first $200,000, $250,000. If that's going to make sure that our kids get Social Security, I think that's an investment worth making. What you hear from Trump is, again, a lot of blather, a lot of wouldn't this be great, but with no financial background, with no balance sheet approach. Right now, Hillary Clinton is doing very well in polling, okay? Very well. But here is a stunning statistic, sir, and she's a friend of yours. Do you find her honest and trustworthy? I think she brings the experience. I think the American people will move forward with her. I think that she has a record uh, demonstrating trustworthy approaches in terms of public policy. And I think one of the best things she's done since she started this campaign was pick Tim Kaine. There's nobody more honest and trustworthy. He's been my friend for 37 years. He will be by her side making sure this country goes forward. She's up by over 11 points in Virginia. No doubt about that. Then can you explain to me, sir, how only 11% of Americans find her honest and trustworthy? 11%. And How do you explain and that? And what I would explain... They don't to, trust her. What I would explain, Andy, is this. We have the person with perhaps the most experience, preparation, running for the office of presidency that we've seen in modern American history. Mm -hmm. And that's been celebrated by Democrats and Republicans. Do that. And we've got somebody on the other side. They don't trust we, her. We She's don't not understand. To them. We don't understand what he's done in terms of his business record, makes statements of the most provocative that I, I can imagine. Has never been anybody less prepared for the presidency of the United States. Senator, you've got to be disappointed with 11%. Listen, I, anybody that's been in politics for as long as she has, and frankly, as now as long as I have, you get knocked around yeah. a little bit. Sir, you would get much higher numbers in honesty and trustworthiness. Listen. You've got, please answer that. How do you explain that? How what I believe is, I trust Hillary Clinton to be a great president of the United States. I'm gonna support her. I'm going to urge my friends to support her. I think the best she thing she's the best thing she's the best thing she's done. Well, what she, would you tell her? I tell her one thing she's done. You pick somebody like Tim Kaine as your vice presidential candidate, who has incredible history of decency, trustworthiness, really steadfastness, and I think that sends that right signal. Okay, but people are voting for her, really, not for Tim Kaine. But other issues. Does it really matter that Randy Forbes lost? He lost. He's out. Does that really matter? Listen, it hurts in terms of our ability to have enough seniority up in Washington, particularly as it comes to armed services. Randy did a great job in terms of preparedness and having a major position on the Armed Services Committee. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll get through this. You know, I, I saw the ship repair guys yesterday. You know, I know how important they are to this region. I know how important they are to our national security. You know, I'm going to be their champion. We're going to need to make sure that we uh, try to avoid sequestration. But, Andy, that comes back again to if we don't get our balance sheet fixed, if we don't end up trying to lower our debt, where are we going to keep coming back and cutting? It's going to be the military. And the worst thing we could do for the military is adopt a Donald Trump-type economic plan that would add $11 trillion to the debt. Don't take my numbers. Take any independent observer. Should Bob McDonald be retried by the federal government? Listen, I think Bob McDonald and his family have gone through an enormously challenging time. And uh, I think that uh, I'm not going to weigh in on what the courts could do, but I think he's uh, paid his dues. So they should not retry him? I, listen, last thing I want to do is try to weigh they in on the They their best courts. shot, walk away. I, I think this process should come to a conclusion. And why do you think that? Because of what he has, the dues that he's paid? Listen, I think that he is, uh, uh, it has taken an enormous toll on him and his family. Uh, I think he has acknowledged that uh, the actions were inappropriate. And I think it's time after years of this being litigated in the press and litigated through the court system to move on. Andy, okay. I have to get into your next okay. one last question. One last question. F-35 fighting, just going off, off the coast. Anything you can tell us about that? F-35 fighter training off the coast? No? Okay. 
Um, I guess that's it.